Instructional Designers and in Offices Drinking Coffee is brought to you by Domino, makers of Domino One, the cloud-based authoring tool for e-learning. Learn how your team can work together better at domino.com. Now, here's this week's episode. Here it comes. Everybody's waiting for it. Anything. <laughs> well, we've got it. It's going. It's <laughs> happening. The music is running. Hello to everybody in the chat. Some nice, some nice weather here in eastern Ontario and, uh, and parts around me, which is nice, finally. In a lousy spring, not going to lie, been a hard one to endure. But, uh, yeah. Well, dang it. Here we are. Happy Wednesday. Here we are again. Happy Wednesday, everybody. <laughs> yes. No kidding. Oh, hey, gang. Um, hope everything is well where you are, folks. And glad to have everybody here together. Folks, we have um, we have a first-time guest with us here today. Miss um, Kirsten York is joining us. <laughs> whoa. Whoa, where did that come from? Holy cow. I didn't know that there was the... Um, I didn't know there was a, a an audience clapping feature in, in here, too. That's very cool. <laughs> Kirsten, it is your first time joining us. Um, introduce yourself to our folks in case they haven't met you somewhere before. I don't hear oh. you. Did you tap your microphone? Hmm. Still nothing. Hmm. That's Remember so that weird. whimsical look I was saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we cursed Today's it. Days be filled with those. <laughs> Hubristic, yeah. <laughs> no, not yet. We'll keep puzzling through, though. Yeah. Did you, did you... Let me see. You're not what? muted. I... At least not as far as I can see on my end. <laughs> How about everybody in the chat? Oh, let's see. We got J light bulb. Joe says no sound. Is that mm -hmm. no sound overall or just from Kirsten? All right. Oh, there yeah. you are. How about now? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, apparently, <laughs> my phone was being difficult. Mm. So. And I have been a instructional designer, a uh, public speaker, and um, I'm trying to think of, you know, kind of the ball of, of all the things uh, for about 20 plus years. Two years ago, I went and shifted, and now I'm doing direct coaching on L&D and public speaking. And that is Angel, my dog, mm -hmm. saying hello. And yeah, all the things. So Hi, everybody. You may mm -hmm. have seen the conferences. Yeah. Also, and hello to Angel. Hello to Angel. <laughs> uh, we're totally fine with dogs on the show, yep, by yep. the way. So it, it's yeah. all good. <laughs> We've so. had many make an appearance, uh, uh, not just vocally. So yeah. <laughs> she's, she's a good girl. She's just, she's just mad because she's in a crate. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> She hears uh, you talking. She, we'll, talking. We'll, we'll grab an audio clip of it, and every time uh, <laughs> we say the right thing, we'll play it back. We'll That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yep. Well, we're talking about this online presenting thing, and Tom yeah. Tips is what we titled it. 
But, mm -hmm. um, you know, all of this work that you've done with all of your clients over the years and yep. everything that you do do, uh, you bring a lot to the table and you've been around for a long time. So you're one of those folks who I scratch my head when I see you at an event and I keep thinking to myself, how come I haven't had her on the show yet? What the <laughs> heck is my problem? So happy to have you here. Yeah, and thrilled to be here. Let's just kick that off, that whole online presenting thing. Wow. Yeah. Is everybody doing it? Is everybody doing it right? Is there is there even a place for us to start on this topic? I oh, mean... my God. Yeah. <laughs> Both, <laughs> mostly. All right. Uh, mostly everybody. Most people are missing the, the bar, but that's not because of them. That's because the switch that you need to make is not at all intuitive. Uh, we have been taught as presenters, as instructors, as as people in learning that certain things are important. Like here, I can see you, okay? I'm getting facial expressions. I'm getting some body language, um, all yeah. of that kind of stuff. Those cues are really important and have been really important. And when you move online, you lose those cues. And a lot of folks are like, well, unless I can see somebody, I can't understand if they're with me and actually that's not true but it's a it's a shift like my teenager can have meaningful relationships with his friends using just text and that's what you need to do that's what we all need to do in online space is shift to whatever method is going to do it um, like bulb Joe is saying, no, no, not going to do it. But the thing, the thing about it is, is like when you're doing stuff online, you're in the audience right now listening. You don't want to be bored. Nobody wants to be bored. All right. Except for maybe one rare psychopath. Mm -hmm. Nobody goes into a learning situation or a meeting and wants to be bored. So everybody wants to participate, but they don't know how. So what we have to do is we have to give them the reason. So ask questions. In the chat, do not ask war and peace questions for the love of God. Ask questions that do require no more than like three word answers to get people started because then either their hands are on the keyboard or they're using assistive technology, but they're responding to you and it matters that you're here. That's why the three of us are here. So it matters that you participate and that's the change that we all have to make and it requires a pretty big paradigm shift. Yeah, it does. I think we've all kind of experienced that. I mean, obviously, over the 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 last few years, for sure. Um, but I mean, ever since the, for a lot of us, ever since the technology has given us the ability to even do this, right? And we saw that it would be valuable at some point, and so we've we've all been tinkering with it to some extent. Those of us who come to the instructional design world at, from that from that technology bent, right? That like to geek yep. out on this stuff, right? Um, and so, uh, yeah, all of these tips are helpful, but for the whole world, everybody, they all kind of got dropped into it immediately. They did, they did. Right? Now, all of a sudden there, there is the interest and the need. And one of the things that I find um, interesting, and I think I even wrote it, it, it just kind of dawned on me, you know, everybody needs, to know how to engage online. Like we should even really just call it or have some sort of conversation around how to be, how to engage in an online thing, right? I like to think of it as everybody, everybody's a presenter and everybody's a learner, right? If you're, if you're answering a question, you know, and you're all on video, all of a sudden, now you're the presenter. Right. Yeah. And so how yeah. how do you, you know, say that? How do you behave? How do you use the tools and all that kind of stuff? So it's all important, right? And it, and people miss the boat to your point. It well, one of the problems, not only were people dropped into it, but like to Netta's point in the chat, um, you know, we can't get our users to do chat functions. We ask questions and get silence. That is the normal thing that happens, and it can be transformed, but it can't be transformed the way we make people do it now, which is we throw them in front of an audience and we have them figure it out, which is like, I'm sorry, but that's the hardest possible way to do it. That's how I learned. That's how you learned. That's not how new other people should learn. So you need to actually practice and nobody gets the time to practice. 
So one of the things is like you did in this session, you start out talking with the chat. I always start out with where are you coming in from today? Ask people to put that in and someone will help out. And as soon as one person does, it helps. Yep. Then I'm drinking coffee. What are you, what are you doing? Uh, put it in the chat, put it in the chat. Let me see, Tony. Oh, mango Pepsi. This is my judging face. I'm judging <laughs> you and stuff like that. You, whatever your audience is, even if it's just, it can everybody hear me throw one in the chat. You will start to get ones. Once you get one or two people helping, it does steamroll because people want to. Yeah. It really yeah. does. People want to participate, but they're afraid to look stupid and they're afraid to do the wrong thing, which yeah. is why don't ask them any question that's more than three words of an answer, please. Not when you're first starting, because it's just, it's so tough. Um, yeah, so Brandon's making an excellent point. What I would do is say, okay, so you have these features to raise your hand. Uh, who agrees with me? Raise your hand. Who doesn't? Okay, can you find an emoji down there? Throw in an emoji, you know, something like that. Um, really tough crowds. Sometimes you have polls. You've got breakout rooms. You've got the ability to do whiteboarding. Sometimes you can throw up a shared Google Doc and have everybody just type in it. There's ways to do it, but you have to brainstorm and practice because if if you are doing it for the first time in front of a live audience, you're both at a disadvantage. That's the hard thing. And that's the way we do it. And yeah, nobody wants to be first. Sarah's right. So if you need to make a plant, get one of your buddies in the chat <laughs> and have them help. You know, call on mm -hmm. the loud, call on the extroverts people like me, we're always going to be there going, let me help you. Um, so it, people really do want to, but the hard part is what I've seen some people do, and this, they only do it because they, they care so much, but they don't have the tools, is they'll go, any questions? You know, it's going to be harder if you don't talk, right? Now, at that point, I would not touch the keyboard. I would be terrified to respond to that person. And I've seen that happen. So when you ask any questions, you're asking them to think up something. So instead it's, you know, okay, Ned is making a good point, introverts. So folks who, you know, are kind of quiet. Okay, how many people yeah. have had that experience? If you have, throw a one. If you've never had it, throw a two. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, throw a three. And then get that kind of thing. Doing polls, yeah. giving options. That's, giving them those instructions yeah. like that, I think is mm -hmm. I think is a is a is a fantastic entry point into this. Um what have you seen people do that have you know with the with the folks that you've worked with right and that are mm -hmm. you know teaching them to present and whatnot when somebody comes in just completely blank or whatever organization they're with what's yeah. kind of the first thing you talk to them about and to help them figure out either what they need or what they should work on well i always start with what their goals are right so what are what are the goals for the event the learning things like that then what kind of audience do you tend to have um, where are they coming from? What are the personalities? What are the job types? And then what is your setup? Do you have chat beforehand? Do you have before the intro place? Do you just start it and it's welcome to the webinar? Or do you have that five minutes beforehand where you do housekeeping? Because housekeeping is crucial. That's the welcoming phase. That's where people hear your voice. They, If you're on camera, they see your face. And for them, it's like, okay, the housekeeping is when you let them know that they're welcome mm -hmm. and you let introverts know that they don't have to be an extrovert in this room. You just would like them to be present. They don't have to be jumping up and down. Okay. You know, a soft, warm welcome. Exactly. Like the chat is saying, so your tone matters. And if you're relatively new to this, um, what I'm going to ask you to do is picture in your mind the person that you most desperately want to go out to dinner with. That person can be someone you know, it can be a fictional character, it can mm -hmm. be a famous person. I want you to picture that person. That person lives right there on your camera. So when you're about to start, 
Hi, everybody. <laughs> that moment, I'm picturing Phil, my best friend from college, mm -hmm. and I so miss him. And because I do, it my eyes brighten up, I lift in the sternum, my shoulders go back, I'm leaning in. It makes a difference, and that's what the audience needs. That's what the audience needs. Yeah, humor, Netta, humor is great. Housekeeping is crucial. Like Gail's saying, housekeeping is crucial. People don't understand that housekeeping is where the audience finds out what is expected of them. Yeah, That's such huge. great in change, engagement in the chat, Chris. I'm hoping yeah. you're <laughs> checking some of this stuff out. What? What? There's, what it's what actually flying this? by. Um, it's <laughs> flying by so fast. You know, vo various folks have suggested, um, you know, using polls to at least get some mm -hmm. you know, the sense that you're you're here and you got to contribute in. Sarah just pointed. Um, I really like Mentimeter's word cloud feature because people can write whatever they're comfortable with. But the thing is, the thing everyone sees is anonymized visual and engaging and a bit less scary. Um, and that's that's pretty cool. That's a different kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and I, a, there is a there is a balancing act though. And, and I think mm -hmm. Buddy was asking sort of, and, and I'm going to forget his phrasing. But you know, you've got you're, you're trying to encourage this, but at the same time, sometimes people just throw stuff and 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 it's not really you know, germane to the topic or, or it just mm -hmm. feels like you're, you're trying to throw something in for the sake of having something, you know, so, yep. um, which is almost in a sense, a disrespect, uh, you know, to the audience's time, you know, you're, you're just throwing in, you know, well, the, the phrase, uh, clicky, clicky, bling, bling, you know, in the yeah. world, oh, I it, love kind of that. Feels, it feels like that, you know, we're throwing in a poll. Well, now it, I it, love that you know, ar the arbitrariness yeah. of some things that we do, sometimes do. Um, yeah, but he used the, the term too, gimmicky, so. which is yeah, uh, exactly it, it, totally, totally get that. Yeah. And it, it's it, there has to be a purpose behind those <laughs> things that we do or else it turns into the classic icebreaker that everybody <laughs> just <laughs> is annoyed with most of the time and, and hates it. And icebreakers um, are the worst. Yeah, <laughs> they are the worst. But the oh, funny thing God. is, is that to your to your point, though, about engaging people ahead of time whatever yeah the, the original reason why icebreakers were created were for it, that exact reason right but i think people just kind of <laughs> took them over the edge to the to the hundredth degree and they just turned into things that i think people thought were mandatory and then they got cheesy and and all that kind of stuff but there is that need to do that housekeeping and to you know do that instruction of hey this is how we're going to proceed and this is yeah. what's going to happen next and and um you know and this and to your point too about this is where they get to know you and mm -hmm. this is where they also get to learn about um how to engage in that particular platform right and and what your expectations of them are going to be throughout the whole process so exactly. You know, it, there's there's all of these reasons for them, but I think it's like anything else. You have to know why you're doing things and have a purpose for them before <laughs> you, yeah. you 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 put them in. And then as adult learners, we all like to know what that purpose is. So yeah, we, we, you know we you know exactly. we don't like to be we don't like to be treated like children. We don't like to be educated to like children we like to kind of know what's going on know what your agenda is know what and by agenda not like what's on the list of things to do but hey but why am know, i here yeah how is she yeah. gonna be treating us today you know is she gonna treat us like kids is you know is she looking down on us is this one of those teachers that thinks they're smarter than we are and you know yeah. and, and <laughs> how are we gonna break down those walls and and engage with these folks really, really? think and exactly and 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 some people do icebreakers really well um i i mean i don't but i also uh earlier in the chat i had made the comment coming in i'd made a joke about the one person being a psychopath and somebody in the chat pointed out hey careful with language solid point language is something that matters so like i'm going to take that out of what i'm saying because somebody pointed it out solid I've shifted my humor to do basically really cheesy dad jokes because humor's <laughs> tricky they're and safe. I'll do it's they're <laughs> safe. And when I was traveling overseas, I'm, I'm from the Boston area. No Boston humor works over like <laughs> it does not land. It just doesn't. It's like crickets. So I now am doing and I'll do it with the chat. Everybody in the chat. I want you to tell me what's the favorite letter of the alphabet for a pirate. Come on, tell me. Pirate's letter of the alphabet, what is it? 
Oh, I, Lydia. Oh, got Lydia it. got on. it. Lydia. <laughs> no, come more people. Come on. Come on in the chat. Let's see. What do we got? Okay. Oh, you think it'd be R, but it's the C. And as long as you push the voice and you're willing to just be silly, mm -hmm. it works. If you did it without the voice, it wouldn't work. So you got to know your own skill set. Like what? Are I apparently need doing? more coffee because I mm -hmm. just figured out that joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pirates love the sea. Buddy, yeah, a couple of people got it. Oh, but. my. <laughs> well, yeah, there you have it. A look into my day, how it's going to go. <laughs> yeah, Sean's right. You know, you can't lead off with with stuff. You have to, again, have people know you and well enough. That's why housekeeping is so important. Because the tone of your voice, the pace, the pitch, um, if they can see you, are you doing gestures? Like, are you animated or are you? And now we're going to, I mean, <laughs> you know, everybody knows uh, doing compliance training is really, really hard. So in that case, you have to kind of push the energy extra and be really, really pulling people because you know, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, we have a mission that we all have to get on. So let's do it together and let's have a good time. And that, that takes works. Yep. Why does it take pirates so long to learn the alphabet? They spend years, spend years stuck at sea. Thank you, Sarah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to put it. That's all a right, fabulous so variation. Yep. Yeah, let's 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 jump back into this a little bit. Do you have any good stories for us about somebody that was just terrible that came to you and they said, I need help at doing this desperately? And you were able to turn them around. Yeah. Um it's really funny. I, I've had one of my favorite favorite clients uh came to me and said well i i'm really i'm not very good at teaching and i said that's not it because i was i was zoom producing some of his stuff i said that's mm -hmm. not it that's not the issue i said the issue is your is the instruction the way your course is laid out um you talk for 20 minutes and then you ask a question that the energy right into the floor and he's like well but i need to be a better teacher i'm like you will be once your material mm -hmm. set up to support you. So let's change the structure of your course. And we did it and built in and, you know, we built in some, well, whether we're going to use breakout rooms, how we're going to do polls, uh, what kind of questions he'd ask, like all of that, we changed the whole structure and made it so that he was checking in every couple of minutes with the chat and the next evals went through the roof. And it's like, and he was coming to me saying, well, I'm not a very good trainer. And I'm like, no, you're, that's not, you're good. You're fine. Your voice is good. You're intelligent. You're compassionate. You got it. That's not what's going wrong. And it's really hard for people to see it when you're in it, you know, SME syndrome, right? Subject matter expert syndrome. You can't, you can't see it. You have to have somebody outside of you come in and go, wait, now I can see you. It's just one little change. It's a solid plus one for instructional design, right? Yes. Yeah. Instructional design is <laughs> a huge part of what I do because I'm doing stage skills. And I mean, I have a theater background, so I'm doing stagecraft with folks. But part of that stagecraft is what are you doing? What's your deck? How much text is on it? What are the images? Are you using props? Okay. Well, let's talk about how props can, you know, good and bad. <laughs> Um, I do, please no props. Um, <laughs> I've seen people use them well, but mostly I've seen people use them badly. Great. Um, now I got to hide my sock puppet collection. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> no, sock puppets are the exception. Those, you know, are, those are always good. You know, during an idiotic halfway through the show, this is, that's when he brings them out. And so now you've scared the sock puppets away. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I took a course that had both in-person and online component. Yeah, David, that's mm -hmm. a tough one. Uh, having done that and the worst, actually the hands down worst was teaching the Windows and Mac version of the same product with a switch box and two monitors. Welcome to hell. <laughs> uh, it was just <laughs> awful. 
And, and because it was, you know, I'm like, click, okay, Mac people, we're going to be doing this windows people play solitaire. And it was just awful, but wow. separate audiences. Yeah, it happens. A lot of high, um, a lot of universities are going through that where, you know, the professors and the, you know, are now having to do this. My friend who's an adjunct professor has to do it. It's really, really hard. There's ways to make it work. Yeah, but again, you got to strategize and practice in advance. You got to think through these things. You can't throw people into it and then just say, okay, good luck. You know, you, what you're asking is for people to completely change their skill set on the fly. And that's an unreasonable request. It really is. Yeah, it, it's a great point. Uh, having, uh, what are your thoughts on having a, uh a helper or a producer or, uh, you know, someone else. I know we, well, I'll, I'll move on to the next question, but what do you think? So for online, having a producer is awesome. Um, because for one, there might be that rare case where you have to boot somebody out and it really helps if somebody else is the bad guy. Um, but like one of the, I work, I do a lot of webinars for one particular group. And when I started with them, um, the lovely guy who runs it says, well, I'm going to handle your chat. And I said, please don't. I said, watch the chat, but I live in my chat. I need to see it. And that's how I work. And he goes, well, no, we'll watch the chat. I'm like, no, please don't <laughs> watch the chat, but I live in it. That's mm -hmm. part of my process. And now that we're working together, he's handed me off to some other people and he's like, yeah, don't worry about her. She's got it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it took a little while. So as a producer, I think once you know what the rules are in a room, it's great. If you're doing dual delivery, you know, if you're doing online and in person, having somebody be able to handle that really helps a lot. But if not, then you got to enlist the room to help you. So, you know, you got to say, okay, online, I'm going to be asking you guys a question in person. We've got six people online. What is the thing that you you know, you want me to ask them or like pull them in and make people talk to each other and you're the conduit, mm. but they know what's going on. So acknowledge what's going on. Yeah. Producers are the key to a great experience. It good producers are definitely good producers really, really are. Yeah. I would, I would think, you know, just, uh, I, I love, I'll just give a quick shout out for those people who are listening in the, uh, in the audio version later. Uh, Dr. Mitchell writes that hybrid doesn't describe it. Well, I call it dual delivery. And, um, I think that's yep. a, I think it's a really good point because, um, we also have a hybrid learning term in our industry. And I think a mm. lot of people think of hybrid as like, uh, e-learning and, instructor led, right? And blending mm -hmm. it together, right? Or maybe we call that blended learning. I don't know what the terms are have defined that, that, as that, these yeah. days. That that type of but, definition is, is almost like a sequential, right? Like you're doing something in one mode and then it switches to another mode, yes. and et cetera, in, in series. Whereas what we're talking about here is trying to address two different worlds at the same time simultaneously. Yeah. 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 yeah I did hybrid forever because I was teaching, you know, I was doing in-person instruction. And then I'd have some things online and I learned really early on certain things when they say, you know, we want to do it online. This is back in the day, flash five. Uh, no, 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 just don't do it. And I'm trying to teach and uh, we're ported through the computer that's in the, in the training center and I'm at home and it was just this whole thing. And I'm like, okay, memo to me, never again. Uh, so certain things work really well online, certain things it's like, we can do some of it online, but some of it needs to be in smaller groups or in person or, or something. Um, yeah. Gail is saying, can you get online participation participants involved via live on screen annotation? Yes. Um, worst case scenario, throw up a shared doc and give everybody rights to it and have everybody go in there and, and make comments or, or type in the doc or a whiteboard, anything like that. As long as you're not asking them to like do something that they're worried about looking bad, mm. 
you know, if you're asking them to doodle, great. If you're asking them to write out the name of their favorite thing, uh, you know, like make it as easy as possible. Make the bar for success as low as possible because you never know what's going on with people. You never know where they are. You never know what their technology is. You never know what their physical limitations are. So make the bar, you know, really accessible. And then from there, you know, just pull people in with your passion and your enthusiasm because you do this because you care. Make that obvious. Yeah. A, a related thought, thought that Sarah had shared earlier uh, in, in the chat was um, an issue with chat, which I always feel when contributing is that it takes me long a longer time to type what I want to say than others. And then by the time mm -hmm. I hit post, everyone else has moved on and you feel like you're interrupting the flow and, and, and things get out of, you know, out, yep. out of out of jive and out of sequence. Um, I got a solution for that. Mm -hmm. um, two. OK. Point one. Don't ask anybody questions in the chat that are more than three words, please, <laughs> when you first start. But let's say you need them to do something more. What you do is you say, okay, everybody, I want you to go in the chat and I want you to type it out. Do not hit send. Okay. I'm going to put this up. You're going to type it out. And when I say go, then, ah, 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 no, I saw somebody do it. Mm -hmm. No, no, back it up. Okay. When I say, then you hit send and we all read everybody's comments together. Like that kind of thing. I um, like that. It's, it's little things like that, that when you're guiding folks that helps, yeah. you know, it, do it, I think, you know, sticky notes are good. Sticky notes. Yeah. Sticky those, notes are awesome. It's a, it's a good part of the tech. I think there are a lot of different features in all of the different platforms that are out that are good to use. But again, to your point, if we're trying to simplify things, sometimes overuse of the features can be a problem. So to, yeah. you know, to, to kind of circle back and, you know, a little bit is it knowing those goals, knowing who your audience is, knowing yep. you know, what they know, what their experiences are. I think that helps guide the direction of, you know, how you're going to be engaging with these folks, whether exactly and be a little bit more advanced. Also, maybe like length of time, like maybe this is a, a, a two day long workshop and it's pretty intense or it's something and it's online all day for both days. And that's just what they've demanded that you do. So you're trying to figure out how best to not. Yeah. People in their chairs and there. Yeah. Right. I mean, sometimes we don't mm. want that, but sometimes it's just no. what is called for. And that's what they tell you. That's your only option. Figure out how to make it work. So you kind of have to dive in and do it, which is, you know, yeah, I mean, all of us, we came up earlier in the chat was cognitive load. And while we need to be mindful of the cognitive load on us, we also have to be mindful, like what Donna's saying, the extra features can be exhausting for participants. The cognitive load, again, you never know where people are. You never know what they're facing. Now, I come from a completely different perspective because I got into tech through adaptive technology because I was in occupational therapy at Easter Seals. and one day my boss walked into the rehab room and said hey you got a low caseload come with me our computer person just quit all of this is yours and i'm like i don't do this and they're like you do now mm -hmm. good luck so that was my way into technical training so you know getting a kid with a puff and sip switch to be doing something on a computer you learn the pacing has to be very, very different. And you never know where people are coming from. You never know what, you know, if you got a global audience, you got bandwidth issues. That's just mm -hmm. a fact. You know, so. it, it's, um, it's a fantastic point. And you, and you mentioned the word accessibility early on in our conversation. And yep. this, it's something clicked in my mind. We talk, when we typically talk about accessibility, we're typically talking about how do we make our e-learning, the self-paced stuff that we create as instructional designers and e-learning developers. And how do we make sure that that is accessible? And I don't think we've ever had a conversation about how do we make the virtual instructor-led training part yeah. of the world we live in and what we do, how do we focus on that part of accessibility? And I don't want to get into it today because we're starting to get a little bit close <laughs> to the end, but I just wanted to point that out just so I didn't uh, forget oh, yeah. so that others think about it too. It's a whole thing. 
It is. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be right. And so yeah, we, we should probably have a conversation around that too. All and right. So um, um, let's see, let's go with uh, pitfalls. What are the, what are the biggest pitfalls or, or the things that people seem to stumble across the most and a couple quick ways. Okay. People can fix off the top of my head, off the top of your head. My yeah. first three, first one, uh, not practicing with the delivery tool before you're doing it. And that doesn't mean practicing once. Like practice like it matters because it matters. Um, so that's the one, practicing with the tool. The second is having a backup plan because something's going to go wrong. If you have to have a deck to teach, you're setting yourself up. You have to be able to do it without. So what is your backup plan? I have a phone. I always have the phone number of my producer. Um, I can use it as a, as a Wi-Fi hotspot. Like there's lots mm -hmm. of backup plans that you can make. Um, I recently so had a, oh, I had yeah. a team, I had a team whose uh, online um, meeting service for security reasons didn't include chat. And so much of what I do relies on chat. So all of a sudden you're like, Ooh, what's the backup plan? Mm -hmm. So Improv. I saw that just <laughs> yesterday. I'm actually attending the Women in Tech Global Conference online this week. And I was in a session yesterday where the instructor came on and was like, okay, we're going to talk about, I can't see the chat. And there was no chat available for presenters. Mm. And she's discovering this as she's presenting. And it's like, Oh no. And she rolled with it beautifully. I put it up on LinkedIn. I, I screenshotted her, congratulated her, sent her a private note. I was like, good for you. You rolled sure. with it. But that's the third one. That's the third thing rolling with it. Yeah. You are going to have something go wrong. You're going to have an accidental troll accidental. You're going to have things go wrong. You're going to have your dog singing Klingon opera in the background. You're going to have that. The best thing that you can do is to breathe in for four, out for eight, and remember that nobody's on fire, <laughs> nobody's in pain. This is just, it's a thing. Worst case, like worst case scenario, I have, I share out the TEDx that I did on this exact topic. It is the worst visual of me that exists because I forgot to put on stage a camera friendly makeup. I look like a big peach moon, but I share it with people because yeah, I don't think it looks, you know, I don't, I'm not looking my best, but I think the message came across right. And I want people to get the message. And I also spent my two hours afterwards beating myself up for not looking my best and then went, okay, that's enough. Get over it. <laughs> Next one, I'll look better. You know, it happens. Um, Nana says, I can't imagine having the resources you're discussing. Our team are the SMEs, software testers, document writers, and trainers who manage our online sessions when we have them. Yeah, Netta, um, one of the things that, that I've found in my 20 plus years of doing this is there's never a common experience. Everybody's experience is the truth. So you might have nobody to do it with you and you got to strategize appropriately. Um, crowbar in time for yourself. Build into the project plan. Time for practice. Fight for that right. And if you need somebody to yell at your project manager about it, call me. I will make the case for you. Um, you know, it's 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 hard. It's hard. Yeah, we got we got uh, one question that dropped into the actual question panel. Buddy added, "Do you recommend any plugins or tools for collaboration or presenting outside of Zoom, Teams, Adobe Connect, etc., uh, that integrate well with the main ones listed above?" And I, I don't remember seeing uh, ones listed above, but I, how would you answer that? I I actually don't. Uh, I, I, I'm going to say that there's awesome stuff out there, but the best tool that I have in my entire arsenal is a physical set of sticky notes. It is the best tool any online presenter can have, because what you can do is you can grab your sticky note and you can say, that's a great question. We're not covering that right now. I'm going to write it down. See the, I wrote it down. I'm going to get back to it at 10 after the hour. 
And then you've just made a contract with them. When you get back to it, you show them the sticky note and you put it away. If they ask you to research something, you put it on like best tool ever. Hmm. It's also how you handle like the things where, yeah, it's a parking lot. Exactly. It's your parking lot. And, Love it. and it's how you, it's, it's how you're able to handle the flow. I'm going to go ahead and put that as our top tip of the day. I like that. I like mm -hmm. that. It, it's simple. It's old school. It's analog mm -hmm. and, uh, and yet, uh, effective right <laughs> as uh, as we're hoping well I'll, and i'll uh um I'll, I'll take that as our our excellent place to probably look for a place to stop unless uh chris you got another question or am i forgetting something critical we need to add in here before we go today no we've covered so much ground the chat has been fabulous as always yes. in fact this is one of the fastest chat sessions we've had in a while things it's been it's like whoa i was i was gonna Thumbs up on that. And now it's, it, there's been four more and it's moving on me. So that's awesome. been absolutely great as always, gang. Yeah. 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 We yeah. love, we love our attendees and our, our chat folks in the chat room. They always uh, add so much to what we do. And um, yeah. Yeah. Very different than training what we do here, but which is why we love it. It's almost like we have a <laughs> whole room full of, of, uh, of guests instead of just one. <laughs> yep. Everybody is always. Everybody's always got so many great experiences and they're, they're, they're so great at adding questions and, and the information that they know and have. So very, very excited about everything. And Thank you. We will start to wrap everything up. Kirsten, you are fabulous. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. <laughs> this was fun. Thank you. Take a minute, drop your uh, contact info into the chat in case folks are looking to catch up with you outside of Idiotic. Um, and gang, as always, we do have to mention that uh, what we get to do here on Instructional Designers in Offices Drinking Coffee is sponsored by Domino Learning Systems, makers of Domino One. I threw a link into the chat there. There's also the big green button under your screen if you're uh, seeing this visually. If you're listening to us on the audio version of this, which, by the way, a few weeks ago, we rolled past 200,000 downloads. So uh, that's, that's right. a pretty cool milestone. Um, yeah, you can check out our website, D-O-M. I-N-K-N-O-W.com. Always a good time. Thanks, everybody, in the chat. Appreciate you guys, as always. Yeah. Thanks so much, gang. Yep. We'll catch you next time. Hey, yeah, if you folks are going to be at ATD, let me drop that in before we go. We're going to be there. there Stop by and say hi. We're also going to do a live version of the video. So, hit me up online or just take a look.